on the catching and cooking of magical folk by Julie Howard Hobson. Our ancestors, to be sure, had a full range of magical folk to hunt. Alas, due to the encroachments of industry and the manufacture of cheap potted meats, the time-hallowed pursuit of edible magical folk, the tasty wee folk as some would quaintly call them, has met a double end. Fewer and fewer people depend upon the fresh catch of magical folk for their protein, and less and less magic exists today in our woods. Indeed, fewer and fewer woods exist. But there is no true need to despair, for the traditional hunt continues very well with these four main types of magic and magical folk that we have left in our copses and hedges. It is with these that my pantry notes are concerned. These words are aimed at a generation bereft. A generation whose, whose trusty ancestors would have known, without research, the things I make note of. And, but for the forced desistance of magical huntings, would have passed this knowledge on still. It is to my peers and the present grand-owners of this illustrious island, that this small collection of notes is addressed. The dark wood elves are easiest to catch. A little shiny object that is sure to catch their eye, placed close to a decent hiding spot, big enough for you to hold a long stout stick in, will do the thing nicely. Before you know it, bang! Dark wood elves always stop no matter what, to inspect all that glitters, which is so often rarely gold. When will they learn? While your dark wood elves are regarding said non-gold object, it becomes merely a matter of smacking them very hard with your stick. And, and then uh, an extremely easy task, I, I must say. Having one smack will usually do the trick. They are real, rather delicate creatures. That said, they are rather stringy creatures too. I mean, they must be stewed thoroughly. Please see my recipes at the end of the notes. I prefer my meat with a little nice fat on the bone, but well, seeing as I'm as lazy as the next hunter, dark wood elves will do, and they often do. Of course, there is the chance of grabbing a nice little fat gnome. Well, <laughs> gnomes are absolutely delicious. Quite lovely, really. All their ceaseless mushroom eating tremendously improves the taste of their flesh. In my experience, even the skinniest gnome will, like, will make a nice tasty morsel, especially when paired with a nice aged mead. The secret, of course, is to braise them first. Gnomes are relatively easy to catch. And the hardest part these days is finding one. I mean, not only are they growing somewhat rare in the countryside, I mean, gnomes have the knack of blending into whatever they are around. And, as they don't stop to investigate interesting objects, and they don't travel in packs, it is something of a rigged game to go out and seek one in the field. No, in my opinion, the only way to catch yourself a juicy tidbit of gnome is to sit yourself down in a moist, mossy spot, preferably by a babbly brook fringed by birch trees, and simply wait. Sooner or later, if you are lucky, and I like to think folk hunters are by nature lucky, a gnome will approach, usually with an outstanding basket of fungi attached to its back. Now, the trick to catching a gnome is stealth. Make no sudden move. Simply inch up to the small figure. I mean, they have poor peripheral vision. Uh, uh, with your <laughs> stick at the ready. When you are within swatting distance, swat. You don't have to kill it in one blow. I mean, quite frankly, the more you beat it, the more toothsome it will be. Gnomes excrete a fear hormone, which, which breaks down cell walls, making their meat fall off the fork tender. Peas and turnips go very well with gnome. However, if you cannot, for whatever reason, look to gnomes for your dinner time fare, a good compromise is the standard light elf. They present a little difficulty in their capture, which is why so many folk go for the dark elf instead. But, but light elf is worth the bother. 
And, and if you follow my instructions, you will see that the bother itself is, is rather small, and all in all, you, you, you just follow my instructions. You will need, besides your, your trusty hunting stick, uh, three items that are, that are relatively easy to obtain. A small mammal, or, or a songbird, a shaker of table salt, and, and a length of good raw leathern cord. Once you've assembled these things, you, you'll find yourself a good hiding spot too. The first thing to do is to wound your small animal in such a way as, as to render it incapable of wandering off, but, but not so much as it's impossible to heal. Um, that, that wouldn't be nice at all. Now place this animal within stick distance of your hiding spot, and then, hidden, with salt in hand, wait for a light elf to arrive. And when an elf appears, as it surely will, I recommend tossing salt on its wings as soon as it comes in to look at the, wood, the wounded woodland creature. Do not wait for it to begin tending to the animal, for by then it may close its wings. Um, once you have salted the elf, of course, you, you will have to disable its spell-throwing ability. And for that, you shall need to tie it up fast uh, with a raw leather cord, which I've mentioned. A tie fast, making sure to bind the hands and wings close to its trunk. That's it. And once the hands and wings are immobile, the elf will kill it keep for days. Well, do be careful, though. Um, it can emit nasty tones, which can damage the oral nerves of some hunters. Now, if you haven't caught one of these before, and, and do not know for certain that you are immune to elfish whales, it is best simply to whack it against a large rock and knock its head right off at the neck. If you find knocking off elf heads on rocks unpleasant, bring scissors with you along with a leathern cord, and, and after you've trussed the elf, you can cut its head off quite neatly. Once you feel dressed it, you can look forward to a lovely spit of meat that evening. I recommend basting it in strawberry juice while you turn it, if you happen to have any strawberries. And perhaps once every half hour or so, and the juice complements their sweet meat very nicely. Do look out for small bones. Light elves have more than you think. We are left with only one more magical folk type left to us to hunt in this day and age. The troll. Hunt it, if you will. But do not, for any reason, eat troll. It is truly nasty stuff. I mean, they're simple enough to catch, as they are slow, dull-witted creatures who will stand still long enough for you to throw a large rock at them, if you happen upon one. And of course, you may prefer to hit them with your hunting stick, which will work perfectly well too. But their skin tastes of rotted flesh, and and their flesh is liable to harbour all manner of nasty parasites that will transfer themselves to your inner gut. It's better to starve. Throw them in the rubbish heap once you get home, and do not let the dogs have them. If you pay close attention to my notes, I trust that you shall be amply and quite agreeably rewarded. May your stick never miss.